rise for a moment of silence and the pledge to the flag. She wants to speak about Orange County or Orange Library Association. Good afternoon. Um, I am the director of the Josephine Louise Public Library in Walden, but I'm also speaking uh, as part of the board for the Orange Library Association. Um, we are grateful for the amount of funding we received from this body. Um, we are always grateful. However, I'm begging you not to cut again. We have been cut every year $5,000 since 2008, and last year was $9,000. Um, that money goes to your libraries, the 17 libraries in Orange County. It goes for technical support, it goes for uh, helping early literacy um, uh, programs, it goes for job information, resume building, um, tech support for people that come in that don't have access to a lot of these devices, uh, job um, applications are done online. They're not in person anymore. Nobody takes a job application in person. They're coming to us. Uh, you have people that, um, an increase in, in families that are in safe homes, they're also coming to us. So we're not your little library that is just doing your little story time program. Uh, we are as busy as ever. Um, the difference that we can make in your community is, is huge. I'm just asking you not to cut um, anymore. Um, I will say that as part of the Orange Library Association, when we come together every other year as a body doing a countywide program, we are bringing revenue to your communities. Um, when we do a Orange Reads, um, we, we did a huge program in Chester, in Sugarloaf, Middletown, Montgomery, um, Walden, Pine Bush, these were all revenues that we brought to your community at no cost to you. But, um, and I realize that, that you're facing challenges, but we are also facing the same challenges in trying to keep our own budgets uh, under the 2%, trying not to increase anything, but we are always at somebody else's uh, list on the bottom, whether it's um, state, we don't receive, we receive very little federal funding. And the funding that libraries receive today are still at the level of the 90s up from Albany. So I, I really ask you not to cut again this year. I, I, I can't even think about asking for a reinstatement for, for what we originally had. Um, but just don't cut us again. So uh, again, a lot of the technical uh, issues, um, this money helps alleviate our, our, uh, our own budgets. I wish I, um, I guess that's all. I only have three minutes, but thank you very you much. You covered it. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Jenny. Okay, uh, motion on agenda item number one. Okay, well, we're going to do that once we get to the second, right? Second. Okay. Yes, legislator Kulasek, and then legislator Magnus Dacus. Human rights on the legislative adjustments, the human rights actually in front of the legislative board. Also, both those items that we were going to reduce county tax by. 
I believe so. Right. Lee, do you? That's what this shows on this chart here, going back to county contribution. Or rather, Colleen, yes. Colleen shaking her head, yes. Well, rather, this twenty-two thousand dollars is not going to lower anybody's tax by any means. I know. I would have liked so, to have left this so in there too. I, I would recommend that we either, well, let's move it to contingency rather than uh, back to county tax. I think the motion might have been made by Legislator DeSalvo to specifically reduce taxation by that much. I thought it was DeSalvo, but I'm, I might, I could be wrong. So, I kind of agree with you, Jim, but that's that's what came out of committee on Tuesday. Well, this this will not lower the tax rate for anyone anybody in the county. I really so rather that. than take it out of the budget, I would rather leave. If it, even if it is twenty two thousand dollars, leave it in the budget. And uh, you're making that a motion. Okay. Is there a second to Jim's motion? At one point you said twenty thousand dollars, and that was for the human rights. And then you said two thousand dollars uh, for the legislative board. So you'd like for both of those. Items to be contingency. Oh, into contingency. Okay. Is there a second? Wish there were. <laughs> Katie, a second. Okay. I don't know if we need to have long debate. You want to just go right to roll call on this, unless. Okay. Yes, Legislator DeSalvo. Just a quick question. So we're going to take 22,000 that we cut, even though it's similar to some other insignificant cuts I'm seeing here today, uh, and we're going to put it into the uh, general contingency to disappear later in the year. Just no, to help us balance the budget later in the year, basically. Okay. Okay. Look forward to the vote. Okay. Roll call. On the amendment. On a sec. Ekis? No. Nemo? No. Anagnostakis? No. Benton? No. Berkman? No. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? No. Dillard? No. Salvo? No. Baggio? No. Hines? No. Hemnant? No. Pulsek? Oh, yes. Paduk? No. Ruskevich? No. Sullivan? No. Turnbull? Bureau? No. Russia? Yes. Three eyes, 16 no's. We're in good company, Jim, I guess. Okay, now we're we, uh, Legislator Hernandez-Takas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's great to be here today. We're, we're wrapping up the budget and just... Um, uh, most of us understand this, most of us know this, but uh, of course everything goes through committees first, of course, uh, secondly it goes through ways and means, and finally we end up here on the floor. Um, anyone can propose anything that they're on a committee, in ways and means anyone can bring forward anything, and on the floor, the last day of the, fi finally voting for the complete budget, anyone can propose any kind of amendments. I want to apologize to Chairman Betting on Ways and Means. I was going to bring it on his committee, but I had to go early, and other people somehow were ahead of me. I just couldn't bring this up, but I uh, plan on bringing something up right now. Um, Ms. Niedermeyer from the Library Association spoke very eloquently about the, 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 the need for monies in libraries. She begged for no additional cuts to the 81,000, uh, 81,000 that we allocate to libraries. Uh, that 81,000, if you look at your budget book, as recently as 2014, was 127,000. Now, that money is not going for books and libraries, because I fully understand some of my colleagues think that libraries are outdated and, you know, books are things of the past not used anymore. The money is going to libraries for uh, technical support services, um, computers, and internet connections for people to use primarily when they're searching for jobs and trying to improve, improve a lot of their life. And these are, tend to be people in the inner cities, the three cities that we have, people that are the poorest of poor, people that don't have what we have and what we take for granted, internet connections. So they have to sometimes go to the library as the only source to get that. And it's not just the cities. The, a lot of the villages have a poor population. I know the village of Walden 
in my constituency has a huge poor population. I know Ms. Nina Meyer's library takes care of many people that need those kind of services. So in a moment, I'm going to propose an amendment to the budget, and I would hope someone would second it. What I want to do is I want to take the 81000 that we have for allocated for um, the libraries for that, for that function, which is line item 571820 in the planning department, and I want to increase that 81000 by $9,000 to make it a $90,000 number to go to the libraries. I will get that $9,000 by taking it out of the retirement costs that our accountants recommended we reduce by $400,000. We have already reduced it by $370,000 to balance the budget uh, in other areas, but we still have $30,000 left over there. So I would take that $9,000 out of that thirty dollars and move it into the line item we just talked about for the libraries. That is my motion. I hope someone seconds it. Okay, Colleen, you got that, right? Oh, yes. That was an easy one, right? Okay. A further discussion on the motion? Yes, Jeff. I'm happy to be of assistance to vote yes on uh, this modest increase, but yet important increase. Um, I just wanted to ask Mr. Nagnasakis, what was the budget line that it was coming out from? What, just what was my notes here? Yeah, number two. Absolutely. I would, I would gladly refer that back to Colleen, who could tell us uh, the exact line item, because all we had were the accountant's notes that we worked off of. It's item number 12 on the summary that, that you were working from on, on the amendment. Item 12 is the retirement cost. He wants to bump that up to $379,000. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, I just took a brief moment about libraries. I got my start in, in government with uh, Thrall Library in Middletown, where it's actually an elected position community-wide. And um, I think in my public life now of 20 years, my proudest accomplishment was to cooperate in building the, the new public library, which is now not so new in Middletown. And for any of you that have not visited, I hope you take time out in your next time in Middletown to take a look at it. It was a historic preservation at the Erie train station and uh, libraries are unique a unique institution in America where it's worth saying it again where it doesn't make any difference if you're rich or you're poor what ethnic background you are how educated you are you know it, it's a unifying force it's one place where everybody can get together and and uh, and learn and improve themselves so uh, $9,000 is a symbolic increase but still I'm happy to support it Okay, Roseanne Lee and then Mike Waymo. Um, I, I would just say, I just want to thank uh, Mike for the motion. And it really makes sense. If you ever want to get a good pulse of the finances of the families who live in your community, you might want to take a look at the, um, the number of students who, who are are eligible for free or reduced lunch in your school districts. If I could just use Pinehurst as an example, just a couple of years ago, um, that rate was only at 20%. It was just two years ago, we are now at 40% district-wide, and that's huge. And it, it says a lot about the people who are living in our community. It says that these people are losing their jobs, they're just not making enough money to be able to just afford to pay for their children's meals, um, and that's meals. So that's not even touching the fact that I'm betting that they do not have internet service or computers at home. Um, I've been uh, met oftentimes in the library at Thrall um, and actually see a waiting list of people trying to get on those computers, and most of them are going on those computers to fill out job applications. Um, so, whereas we have a department that helps people to find jobs, this expense really should um, actually go under that expense. It's sort of like the same thing. It's a way to help the people in your community who 
have lost jobs in the past several years due to the economy, but on a, on a different level. You're doing it through community libraries. This is something that they can actually walk to and use I, I um, definitely don't support it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Colleen, our net effect by making this line item uh, 379 would be a reduction in county taxation down to 13,000? No, he's adding 9,000 to libraries and taking 9,000 from retirement, so it's not zero. Okay. Thank you. 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 I would just like to make a comment in my area, the library has its own separate taxing district. So they have to put their budgets together themselves every year. And uh, I think they could probably handle it themselves. Again, the, the nice lady who was here before, um, she was just hoping for status quo and was satisfied with that. And we heard that before the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to, I was going to, Mr. Benton raised the same point. I think year after year we raise this question and we're all reminded all, most all our libraries are taxing entities and so therefore we're really double taxing the people of Orange County to do it. And I understand it's a good idea. I, I think it's a principal question for me of whether or not we, we could do that. And it really isn't going to have that much of an effect over 17 libraries. It's more of a symbolic thing. And I think the important thing is, is that the libraries can tax and get the money themselves for the very local areas if they need it. It's true in my area, I'm in a row. Legislator Perdue. I would have I would agree with uh, Legislator Ben and with Mr. Amo. And in regards to them being their own taxing district, today I had a proposal to cut it. I'm not going to uh, present that. However, like you said, uh, they were looking for status quo. Well, let's look at like what we've talked about. Over the past, since 2007, we've given, we've given libraries $934,400. They also have the ability to tax the people in their district. Like you talked about, Mike, double taxation. You know what, libraries do a lot of great things. I agree with that, all the comments they said, but this year was proposed to keep it at $81,000. Apparently, they've adopted every single year from 120 to 115, where, Michael, you said in 214, Mr. Nagastakis, uh, they still were in the 120 range. They received $90,000. So 215, they got 81, they adopted. They've been adopting every single year, making adjustments in their budget for their communities for library taxes. Um, this year's request was 81,000. Um, I'm with them. I, I agree that if, the, if there's some additional items they need, um, that's what the, why they are a taxing district. So I'm not going to support that today. Roll call. Yes, Legislator Benelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and I would just like to echo, I wasn't going to say anything because I think some of you know how I felt about this. Um, this is something that's been in, that was in the budget for a very long time. And as time has changed, when this was first put into the county budget, it was also in towns and villages budgets, and there weren't taxing districts. So I just kind of want to echo some of the comments from the previous legislators who spoke, that they do have the opportunity, and I commend, and I'm sorry, I don't remember your name who spoke, um, that she came and she, she actually put forth, and obviously they've discussed this, and they're asking for the status quo. I appreciate you taking that into consideration. And the county executive and his staff, especially budget, took a look at this. I think at this particular point in time, we're probably better off. And as Mr. Paduk said, if we need to change things coming next year, we'll obviously review it. So I will not be voting for the increase. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Roll call. Yes. Ekis? Yes. Amo? No. Anagdastakis? Yes. Benton? No. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? No. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? No. DeSalvo? Yes. Baggione? Yes. Hines? No. Chemnitz? Yes. Kulasek? No. Duke? No. Riscavich? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Turnbull? Absolutely. Vero? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 12 ayes, 6 noes, 1 abstention. Okay. 
and I, Jen, and Jenny's bad, I can see her shaking her head. I don't think she would, you know, she didn't want to see us cut it, but she certainly would welcome an increase when Lee said that I saw her say no. <laughs> Sorry, just had to say that. Okay, let's, let's thank you. Um, I'd like to get into uh, the recommendations by Legislator Paduke. Uh, we'll vote on these individually. That was, yeah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go into the mics. It's already there. I mean, we're going to vote for the whole the budget in its entirety at the end, correct? Right. Okay, so we're going to go through Mike's recommendations one at a time, which we have in writing in front of us. Mike Paduke. Except the libraries, of course. Okay, we'll start with the Council on the Arts. All right, let me just start by saying, you know, oh, is there a motion? I'm sorry. Motion. For the change on the yards first. Okay. Motion. Okay. Go ahead, Mike. I'm going to rescind that, uh, and I'll tell you why. Let me. I can actually put this all together at once. This year has been very frustrating. I'm sure for not only most of us, but probably all of us, in regards to certain items in the budget that we'd like to review every single year. Mine this year just happened to be the general highlights section, which is what all of these six items are that I'm talking about reducing. Um, it's very frustrating when after the budget meeting, I ask about it uh, after the committee meetings where I, I would have asked all the reasons and all the questions I had there, that I got the information just before the Ways and Means committee meeting. All right, so I do my reviews. All I see is every year is overestimating the expenses in these budget lines. Now these are items, yeah, some of them are great. Uh, you know, some of them need support. But let's keep in mind, over, since 2007, like Mrs. Niedermeyer said, we've been reducing every single one of them. We've eliminated some. It's quite uh, ironic, I think, that we eliminated funding for the literacy group and we're supporting libraries. You know, stuff like that. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is, if these were initially uh, proposed in the original budget on their general highlights, like they've always been for the 18 years that I've been here, and we had questions on them, they could have been addressed in committee. They're hidden through uh, in planning, uh, in the police academy, in its own council for the arts. Um, but we didn't address it like that. I didn't because they're not even listed as that. They're listed as specialty payments or they're listed as grant payments in, in the budget itself. It's very frustrating to me because I see where the amount of money that we're giving to them, how often do we get reports on them? Was it positive? Did they make a huge impact from it where we could support it next year? I would think that we'd hopefully that from now on, every single year, the, the funding that we give to these come in and make a presentation to us in regards to what they use the money for. You know, I think some of them, or some, I don't know, I can't really say that. Uh, some of them take it for granted that they're getting money from us. So let's make it work in the budget where there's, is it a program that's worthwhile? Is it just a waste of money? It's all taxation, additional taxation. You know, uh, that's what my concern was. So I, I'm able to actually rescind all of my requests today, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I'd like to be able to address them. I'd like to not overestimate the expenses in these budget lines that get returned to us that everybody gets taxed on. That's what I'm looking for, making our budget process better by eliminating, over, uh, by eliminating overestimated expenses so that we have a, a really good hold on what we're actually approving. Because in this budget, there's so many lines that you can transfer from this to this to this. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know how much extra money is in the budget. I know there was $16 million the last probably... 15 years, so this, it's everywhere in the budget. This was my opportunity to address it. Um, a lot of these things, the Orange County Land Trust, I know they're worthwhile wild, uh, things to support. However, if it's been reduced every year, it's not reduced at all this year. The county executive didn't think it was important to reduce anything this year. So my, my request, I'll rescind, and I just wanted to get my, my uh, information out there that I'm, I'm really frustrated with how we have to look at these things in the budget without being able to identify them right away, talk to them in, in committee, get results, get re, get it resolved, get the information we need. Is the program work or why we're supporting it? And, and that's all I'll say. So I'll ask to rescind all my requests for changes uh, if, if it's accepted by the uh, chairman. Yes, I accept it. I don't know if you have to. Uh, you were the second? First was the motion. Okay. Okay. Who was 
second. Why? Well, I, I'll just say, you know, we had a long discussion in caucus this hour before this. You know, and I, I get it. You know, I get it. I just, our jobs are to uh, give the taxpayers our oversight on where we spend our money. And if I see or think something's overestimated in this budget, I'm not afraid to talk about it like none of us should be if we can find it. So I'll, I'll rescind my second. Yeah, but Mike's taking them all off the table now. I'm taking them off the table. So you made the motion, and Jim Poulos has made the second, I think? No, the second. Take her, you agree to take it off the table, right? Okay. Okay. Good. Before I recognize Legislator Benton and Legislator Hamill, Melissa was nodding that that's a good idea. And, you know, at least once or twice during the year, maybe give us an update on these various funds and how they're working. Last year, Legislator Hamill, um, suggested to me to send out a letter to each and every group and we did interview a few and we got letters back of justifying what they needed the money for and we did make some hard cuts last year and I was right out in the head on that you know with the libraries and everything and I didn't want, didn't want to do it in some cases but we cut the, the police academy and then we reinstated it based on um, Supervisor Green's letter and you know we did look at these closely last year but we can certainly get updates throughout the year and that's a good point like, and we'll do that Right, Steve? Can I exact, I mean? You, know, you guys asked for financial updates last spring, a year ago, and I never got one reply back. And if you guys want to know about this, I'm all for it. Year after year, it's my second budget. I said we should start this in August. It starts two weeks before the budget's due. I haven't heard any major... But that's not what we're asking. We're just asking for it during the... In 2016, come maybe June or whatever, once or twice during the year, give us an update on these I, and just... Right, we just want an update in, in, in committee, that's all. We're not asking for too much. Don't, don't be defensive about it. I'm just, not defensive, but when you say, that, it, it, you know, like Sir Duke says, oh, there's no cuts made, we cut seven million right off the bat. Well, listen, then, then you should, Steve, you should also say that, you know, when you ask for recommendations, I sent you back a recommendation regarding uh, special education funding, and, and if we've looked at that. As a matter of fact, you answered me on it, so don't say we don't respond to you when you ask us for stuff, well, because... All right, you guys, no crossfire here. Okay. All right, uh, Legislator Benton, and then Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hamill, and then Ekus. Yeah, I would say I would have to agree with uh, Mr. Paduke. Um, I think a lot of these groups do just expect funding, funding, funding year after year. I think I'm probably one of five people still sitting on the stage that uh, was there when libraries started at it, or maybe six. Uh, libraries, this program started out as $25,000 a year. And it's just escalated, escalated, and escalated, and it's expected, expected, expected. So I would have to say I agree with him on that. The one thing I would disagree with him on, though, is the fact that um, I believe some line items can be, have the nomenclature be a little bit better. But unfortunately, I believe the truth is, is that these titles of these account numbers run statewide through all budgets, uh, local as well as county, and they're all the same name. And I think it would probably take a, an act of the legislature in Albany to be able to have uh, new names created. Uh, and obviously, one county would want a different name than another county. That's why everything is uh, you know, nebulous and lumped under specialty payments. Uh, everybody likes to pick on specialty payments. But that's not our choice. We are told by Albany that that's what it has to go under. And when the budget directors are putting their, and department heads are putting their uh, budgets together with the county executive, they come in with all of these line items as what specialty payments is going to total up to. So we could ask for more information in that way as so you know, what the specialty payments are. But uh, the money is really not hidden. Legislator Ramo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thanks for reminding everyone that, that we did try to do that last year, and, and it is sort of a modified sort of program outcome merit budget process where you ask these these programs to tell us what their goals are, what they've accomplished last year, and what their goal, what they plan to accomplish next year, and why they need the money. And I think maybe that should be a model that we should think about in committee, whether it's rules and puts together that kind of thinking, and all committees apply it. Uh, because many of these, these grants go to different committees. 
But I think maybe a good place to start to be real concrete, if we could agree, is come 2016, send a letter to these folks and say, okay, we gave you this money, tell us what your goal, what your plan, your, your, your financial plan is for this year. How are you going to spend this money? And list out the details. So then when we get back in August and we start saying, you know, the, the county exec, we can say, well, where did they go? Did they spend it this way? And, and we know. And then, then we can come back. So I think we should start right away. There's a concrete suggestion. Let's start right in January and ask them, please get to us a report. We do that every year. Minority Leader Ekes. We do that every year. Thank you. I'm uh, not going to disagree with anything that's been said to this point. Um, what I am going to tell you is that at any moment now, I'm sure you're hoping, uh, Mr. Chairman, that we're going to vote on the um, revising of the proposed 2016 executive budget. Um, can I fairly say that I perhaps studied this budget more than anybody else? Would that be fair? Or maybe only conflicted with Colleen. <laughs> um, yeah, perhaps I did. But um, uh, certainly I can't vote for this resolution because as you folks are all aware, I put my reductions through committee the way it was supposed to go and so on like that and I realized through the democratic process they got voted down. It's interesting the numbers we're talking about here. Um, uh, it was mentioned in our caucus and it was mentioned here again that the $22,000 change we're looking at right at the moment will make a difference in taxation, which is absolutely true. Um, and I just want folks to recall that uh, I made almost a quarter of a million uh, changes in reduction, and um, those were turned down. So um, again, I want to thank everybody who has been complimentary to me for looking at this budget. I hope I have the time from now on, even if it is too much. A lot of people mentioned that they learned a lot. So um, anyway. I want to thank you and explain to you why I'm not voting for this particular agenda. Thank you. Uh, Legislator Nick Steinman. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to add on to the comments of the minority leader. While I appreciate everything he said, um, and he was correct in everything he said, um, I've heard people voice that kind of a sentiment here today, and I just want to make clear everybody understands the process. Sure. We have committees, and, and we go to committees uh, that cover each of the particular departments. Then we have ways and means where you can bring anything forward, and I believe the minority leader did just that, and he's correct. It was voted down in that committee. But as per, and I'll be corrected by our attorney if I'm wrong, but as per our Orange County Charter, anyone, including the minority leader, can reintroduce his motions right here on the floor today, certainly within the laws of Orange County's charter, and can get a vote by the full legislature, and maybe it would pass the full legislature as opposed to failing on a committee. So that's the process, and that's what we're here today doing, and I think it's working fine. Thank you. Thank you, Legislator Anagnostakis. Uh, I'll just say something about the executive recommended budget. Um, sometimes we feel like we have to cut that budget even more. But this budget, in large measure, is due to the legislature. We did not make reductions last year and throughout the year and watch our pennies. The county exec would not have been able to submit a budget like this. So in large measure, we share this budget with the county executive. We worked with long hours last year trying to, you know, get the early retirement incentive in there. We debated that up and down. We passed it. The separation agreement and so many other measures throughout the year to try to control costs. We agreed with the county exec in many areas and, and disagreed some other areas. But um, this is below the 0.73 cap. If we start to cut it more, it's going to worsen our situation next year when we have to adopt a budget. So I think it's a sound budget and I think um, there's a lot of good things in there, but if we start reducing more, you know our staffing levels are very tight as it is. I mean, we can see that in probation, probably the clerk's office to some degree, and in other areas. But I feel comfortable with this budget, and I, probably last year was the only year, I think, during my tenure that I voted against the budget. And this year I feel a lot better about this budget. That's all I have to say. Yes, Legislator Berkman. <coughs> As a clarification, are we voting on these modifications as a separate vote and then the entire budget as a, a second vote? And if that's the case, 
Uh, do we have a separate vote again on the capital plan? So, Actually, what, I, what I'm pleased to see in the capital budget is the allocation that the county executive and his team put in about the Heritage Trail. So, and I think I voted maybe 16 times against the capital budget. This year, perhaps I'll, I'll reconsider. On the, on the uh, issue about uh, these legislative recommendations, I just also like to say uh, that I appreciate the support, bipartisan support, not unanimous, but widespread support for the $50,000 augmented allocation for homeless uh, targeted community or reach, so we can reach out to them uh, on a countywide basis. And uh, I appreciate the, the county executive staff as well as every legislator that supported it. So uh, as far as the, the main body of the budget, it's better economic times this year for this budget than last year, so it, it, uh, it's, it's just an easier time to consider than last year, which was kind of a calamity. So uh, nothing's perfect, and this budget is, of course, not perfect. But what I'd like to see in future budgets is uh, a bit clearer explanations of things, like at least with that which is the legisla legislature's used to, like I mentioned Mr. Poor at the Ways and Means Committee. If we had the list of, of, of activities that Mr. Paduk was referring to, it was on a separate page, it was just easier for us to, to consider these things rather than have to dig through and get, you know, this is a three inch thick book. It used to be right on page two. So it was spelled out just easier for us. And, uh, and I'm also, a, just a word of caution on, on this budget. Uh, I'd like to see clear, more clarity and this is meant to be a, a helpful suggestion, uh, to see where, where the expenditures come from. So, uh, like, we've had some changes in, in, in grants and intermunicipal grants, uh, for an example, and I'd like to see where the source of the money comes from when it's, when it's passed out. So, uh, but on balance, this year is uh, a lot different than last year. Okay. Yes, Legislator Cheney. Uh, just a follow-up question to Council. Uh, Legislator Berkman mentioned a uh, change to uh, uh, capital plan, the, or the voting on the capital plan. We did have a change to that. Does that have to be voted on today? Uh, well, that's going to be included on the adjustments. Um, unfortunately, it just didn't get uh, transferred over to the document that's attached. Uh, but it was on the adjustments that was passed out. It was on the adjustments that was passed out of uh, the Special Ways and Means uh, Committee, the 2016 Capital Plan, the story and create capital project of 25000 for future plans. And I think Mr. Cheney that, changed the language on that. That was, well, right. the, <laughs> that was not the original language. The original language, I believe, in committee was for preservation studies and interpretive research right, for of county properties. Right, so we'll just add that on. Uh, but that was and is intended to be part of the adjustments here. Thank you. And before I take Roseanne, I just want to say two other things, not to delay the meeting or the vote. Um, County Executive assured me that uh, he will address within the budget um, Curley's concerns that he brought to committee on Tuesday. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely, which is good to hear. And the other thing is the County Exec, myself, Mayor DiStefano, and the IDA Governance Committee met at 1 o'clock, and I think you'll be happy with what we discussed with respect to the trail. The county Exec will bring us a proposal next month. And, uh, I'd be happier if I was in the room. Me too. Well, okay, well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> you, got okay. the, you have the juice to invite Rose me. Okay, um, I'm going to... Uh, Take uh, Mr. Anagnostakos' um, suggestion 
and um, please bear with me because I don't have my glasses with me. I left them in the car, but or maybe someone can help me out with the line items. But um, yeah, I can try. But um, I guess five seven one eight two zero probably. Mm -hmm. I am looking at. I, that's all right. I'm, I'm looking at the the human rights um, director, the new position. I believe that's on page 222. So um, in committee, it was suggested to uh, to create this position, and I believe it was 75,000. It was lowered from 95,000 to 75,000 in committee. And um, I, I want to, um, I guess, repeat what I had said in committee, um, is that um, I don't believe that even administration has proven to me that we need this position. <laughs> We've been told that uh, most of the complaints are going to the State Human Rights Commission um, and that they're really just being funneled um, straight to the state and that currently we have a secretary or a clerk who's just picking up the phone and, um, and funneling those calls or those complaints or those concerns through and so I don't believe that anybody has made um, a, good, uh, a good argument for increasing positions. Now remember last year, we were in dire circumstances. Now this year we're creating positions that really do not have any sound arguments. And no sound arguments have been made. So I'm just going to leave it at that, make a motion to take that 75,000 out. Um, Are you remaking the motion that uh, Minority Leader Ekes made, basically, the building committee? Is that what your same numbers and I same think lines? that was, that was. You um, wanted to choose the lines that he had in there? Motion. That's right, the committee had failed, and I'd like to put it back on the table here for the entire legislature to pass uh, or to vote on, and if someone would second it, then we would have a chance to do that. Second. Uh, Ms. Sullivan, if I can just ask you, um, you're, you're seeking to remove the full 75000 for the executive director position. I believe Mr. Ekes' uh, request was to add 45000 plus for uh, the, uh, an assistant. Uh, is your request to add that or have no personnel for uh, human rights? Actually, I, I, I actually like the assistant idea, so I would add that back in just for an assistant but take out the, the new position. And that's okay with you, uh, Myrna, I know you second it. Okay, discussion? Legislator Amo. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm, um, I just want to address that a little bit. I, I, I understand the, the need to try to reduce budgets and, and to save money. Uh, I quite don't understand uh, Legislator Sullivan's argument here. Uh, it seems from my perspective, and I would think from her perspective as well in Pine Bush, that if we look around the county, if there's one thing this county needs, whether it's Pine Bush or, or Monroe or Port Jervis, is, is we need to ramp up our efforts to deal with human rights and to begin to think about this. And it's not just about complaints, it's about a, a, a systemic effort to go after how we're going to make our county more culturally diverse and friendly. What are we going to do? Uh, we can't have this... Uh, opportunities we have, whether it's in Monroe or everybody's suing everybody or people have civil action against us across the county. We need to be thinking about this. And I, I, I really think it's a bad time to cut a person who wants to take that leadership for us. Further discussion? Roll call. This is, there was a motion, was there? Okay, okay. I, I have the, the numbers you have it okay. here. Um, uh, line item, um, line item five six three seven three zero to be reduced by ninety five thousand. It would well actually it's seventy five thousand now, and then that would be coupled with um, the uh, line item five six four two three zero to add in a human rights assistant um, and replace forty two thousand zero ninety eight. Um, and then line item 410011, real property taxes to reduce this line by 52,000. 
there is. No, wait, sorry, oh, sorry. Yes. No, 75,000 has not passed yet. The amendment to make it 75 hasn't passed yet, so Rosanna is correct in oh. leaving it at 95 okay. and leaving it at 52. Then, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I stand so, corrected. So that line item would be reduced by $52,902. Okay. So now we're voting on the motion. Any further discussion on the motion? Yes, Legislator Ben. Just for anybody who has their paperwork from Ways and Means, these are Legislator Ecus's proposals, uh, numbers one, two, and three. Okay. All right. Can we get a roll call now? Okay, roll call. Isaac? Ecus? Yes. Amo? No. United Stockings? No. Benton? No. Berkman? No. Benelli? No. Cheney? No. Dillard? No. DeSalvo? No. Faggio? No. Hines? Yes. Kemnitz? Yes. Wolsek? No. Padu? Yes. Ruskevich? No. Sullivan? Yes. Hero? No. Russia? No. Five eyes, 14 no's. Okay. We ready to vote on the executive recommended budget now? As amended. No, we're not voting on revising. We're making the adjustments. We're making the adjustments. Okay. Do we need to go through all the adjustments? Or we have the list. Okay. Well, if Mr. Benton would like to do it, that's fine. Do you want to, yeah, synopsis, give us a synopsis? Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't going to go through them line item by line item. I was just going to think that we should approve what passed ways and means plus Mr. Nagnostakis' 9,000 adjustment. It's passed, right? Okay, so that's what it will be. But if it's included, it will be passed on to the county executive with that change. Right. Well, we're voting here today is the vote that passed in ways and means on Tuesday, those changes, and the one additional change today. That's what we're voting on right now. Okay, and if this passes, we can pass this budget finally on December 3rd. Correct. Okay? Okay, so roll call on the executive, or the changes, rather. On agenda number one, as revised. As revised. revised. Yes, Katie. I, I just wanted to state, because we were talking about the human rights, that there is a reduction there of $20,000. Right, that change is already made, so. I just wanted to Lee was right, and Roseanne was right, and I was wrong on that when I said 32000 Okay, all right, roll call. Ekis? No. Amo? Yes. Anagnostakis? Yes. Benton? Yes. Berkman? Yes. Benelli? Yes. Cheney? Yes. Dillard? Yes. DeSalvo? Yes. Faggione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Chemnitz? Yes. Kulisek? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Truskevich? Yes. Sullivan? No. Bureau? Yes. Brescia? Yes. 17 ayes, 2 noes. Okay, motion to adjourn. I just announced quickly we have a uh, round table on Monday at 2 o'clock and a leadership meeting at 2.15 on Tuesday. Mr. Chairman, can I make a statement? Yes. Yeah, I just want to let all legislators know that there's going to be a meeting uh, here Monday night uh, with respect to public safety. Uh, Walt Corey and Alan Orsbicki, along with the county executive and I, will be uh, meeting with the fire commissioners, fire chiefs, and EMS workers throughout the county to talk about uh, interoperable communications. You'll also see on this month's public safety agenda an $11 million request. We've already got $6 million in grants. We've uh, funded the project to a certain extent, but that will finish the project, and we're going to present that to all the uh, emergency services people except the police. The police are going to come to a second meeting. So if any legislators want to come, it'll be here Monday night at 7 p.m., and we expect it to last till about 8.30. Thank you, Mr. Hines. Okay, we're adjourned.